Thank you, dear. Back or forward. How's everyone doing? I think we already covered that, but yeah, I'm going to say it again. Uh, I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate the uh, Cultural Council having me and also Creative Mornings. I have a big mouth, so I don't think I need this, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it here just in case. We want to do some effects. Um, again, my name is Craig. I am a multidisciplinary artist. Um, I have a bullet point of all the things that I have done, and that kind of ties into this, this theme. Um, my whole um, outlook on art and my career has been pretty much come from a place of yes, and you've heard that kind of before. Now it's almost a bumper sticker, but it really is more of a way to be and a, and a way to kind of guide your career where it should go. Now, there are times when you should say no, uh, maybe the wrong client or the wrong situation, but generally most of the um, disciplines that I've taken on have only happened because I said yes to something I was uncomfortable saying yes to. Like, I don't know how to do this, but I don't need to tell the person asking me that. I just need to say yes and then go figure it out, right? So in the age of YouTube or, you know, if you're lucky, you have a mentor and you can just go to that person and pick their brain or just find someone, uh, maybe someone knows someone and just, and just say yes to it, do it, and then now it's on your resume and you've done it once and then you can do it 10 times. So if you've ever experienced that, congratulations. Um, that's pretty much how um, I stay busy because being a freelance artist is not a piece of cake because it's feast or famine. Um, but saying yes to more things and being more diverse allows you to uh, just stay working more steadily. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna let this kind of, you can soak that in, that's a good one. It's a little, it's a little lengthy. But um, saying that philosophy be begins in wonder. Uh, is basically is basically the encapsulation of that. Am I in the way? It's blurry. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get yeah. Uh, Aristotle thought that philosophy begins in wonder. Wonder is something children do quite well; it comes natural to them. Unfortunately, as a lot of us grow older, we stop wondering and stop questioning and stop attempting to look at things in new ways or non-traditional ways. We are rewarded for our acceptance and conformity to what is accepted by most people, for our adoption of whatever is popular. Some of us stop wondering altogether. So, um, very true, very true and very unfortunate. And you, you see that all kids, all kids are artists, right? Because they just, the rules are out the window, the walls are down, they don't care what anyone else thinks until they reach a certain age. Oh, I just did that. Cool. <laughs> I meant to do that. It's like a James, this is like James Bond's laboratory in here. I thought lights down and they did. I don't know why this is in here. This is the, this is the dictionary uh, definition. You don't need it. But the emotion, wonder, the emotion which is excited by novelty or the presentation to the sight or mind of something new, unusual, strange, great, extraordinary, or not well understood. And that's that place of yes. Um, I never understood how to do set design. I was always amazed by it until someone said, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, I need work. Yeah, I totally, I totally know how to do set design and then figured it out. So um, here's the wide and varied things that I've been lucky enough to tackle um, in my career so far. And I imagine the, uh, in fact, this slide is from a previous time that I did a talk like this and I had to add four more things since that last talk. And that's not a pat on the back, but more of a like, Great, I'm going to stay busy because I've added four more skills to my skill set. Um, so we'll, we'll touch on these as we go through the slides, but um, can everyone read it? It's tiny. It had, to, it had to be to fit them on there. But Illustrator, Storyboard, I've been able to work on uh, a feature film. I've um, character and concept designer. I figured out how to do effects makeup in the Halloween and the horror realm. Um, I'm an art advocate and a curator and a producer of art shows for local artists to provide um, opportunities for them. Uh, some of my business partners are here today. Um, I do a pop-up gallery with them. Uh, again, set design, graphic design, creative director at Fright Nights. There's so many here. I'll probably put this back up at the end. So if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, you just let me know. But all of this has been an honor. <coughs> All of this has been an honor to be a part of. And when, when I was dreaming about what I would want to be as an artist, um, most of this was not on that list, okay? I had a very narrow view. So uh, the key was to, to widen that so that the possibilities would also widen. Um, tattoo artist, um, art teacher, that's one of my favorite things. And that's, that's a great place to actually dispense wonder because um, 
Most, most people who are taking a class are at the beginning of their journey, so that's a great thing. So I'm in the middle of my journey, so I, I should be passing on everything that I know to those students. And that's one of my favorite things to actually do because um, you, can have, you can help them to avoid uh, you know, tripping over things that I tripped over. You can uh, push them out of their comfort zone because they may not push themselves. So I love teaching. It happened by accident, again, like most of this stuff. Um, but it's one of my favorite things to do. So if you've ever considered taking a creative class, printmaking, uh, drawing, whatever it is, definitely do it. No matter if you think that you're an artist or not, you are, as, as was stated, you are an artist. So open that up. It's a great stress reliever. If you participated in the panel out there, the mural panel, you probably got de-stressed and you didn't realize it. So throw some paint around. Make a crooked uh, mug over at, the, over at the armory or something. <laughs> I got crooked mugs. Uh, <laughs> I've been uh, fortunate to be in uh, quite a few music acts, and I still am today. This was the last one I was in that had a brief uh, moment of, of success. This is us at Sunfest. Um, so all through, I got out of art school and immediately joined a band and went on tour. And my parents are like, what are you doing? Why did we send you to art school, dude? But uh, that's just what, it was a place of yes kind of thing. I met these guys, I was working at a record store, you know, it's like the complete story of that. We started a van, it actually started to get good. We got management, bought a van, and just left Florida. And so I did that for a while. It wasn't this van, this was, this was later on. This was about ten, uh, eight years ago now. So, uh, and I'm still playing around town, so you can catch my band Raised by Wolves here, there, and everywhere. Um, music is something that I do for fun now. At that time it was, we got to get a record deal. You know, we were in our 20s. We're like, we're going to be rock stars, and we were wrong. But, <laughs> ta-da! Uh, but that's okay. At the time it was not okay, because I was 25 years old, and I was like, my dreams are shattered! But it just, uh, as you guys know, when that door closes, these other doors. So I went back to art when the, when the music career kind of uh, took a hard, hard turn into a ditch. And uh, so now I do it for fun, which is actually more enjoyable. I didn't realize that. Oh, recent, more recent. So we're playing, you know, downtown, mostly downtown, mostly Palm Beach County, Guanabanas or, or Respectables or Hullabaloo or Voltaire. Uh, that 500 block is a hotbed uh, downtown West Palm Beach of live music. So we're blessed to have that here, culturally speaking. Um, so we play, this is a Respectables show. So blessed to still be doing that. I still have some semblance of a voice left. Uh, here's uh, me and my creative director role at uh, Fright Nights at the South Florida Fairgrounds. This is at the end of the night. As you can see, everyone is completely drenched in sweat and their faces are falling off and all that stuff. But uh, um, this is, if you've ever been part of a team, I hope you have. Um, and I was always kind of a lone wolf when it came to being an artist. And a lot of us artists like that, just me in the studio with my headphones. But that's a little egocentric um, way to be. This job has forced me to... Um, collaborate because their creative team is about um, it starts at 12 designers and then it branches out from there to uh, s uh, eight makeup artists and then over 150 actors so there's a lot of creative juice under this roof and I'm tasked with trying to keep it on the tracks and take in ideas and to bring it to the team and see if it can be turned into something good or not um, try to keep everyone happy which is almost impossible at uh, 200 people but um, it's been a great experience because, uh, like I said, the lone wolf mentality was not going to work. Um, the, the inability to compromise and all that stuff rose to the top, and I realized that, that I couldn't be a leader and do my vision all the time. Um, so this was great. This was great for the artist ego. It kind of put a little, a little uh, filter on it and knocked it down where it needed to be. Um, there's nothing wrong with artist ego until it goes over a certain percentage. And I would say that percentage is somewhere around 50%. <laughs> so just throwing a number out there. Uh, here's some set design. So using my mural, uh, my mural sensibilities to do big, big things inside the house. Um, this, was a, this was a doll house, of course. So right here's a little drop window that um, someone pulls a string. The door comes slamming down on the floor, and someone lurches their body out of it. Uh, so super scary. If you've never been to Fright Nights, and you like adrenaline, I highly recommend it. My favorite part of this shot is this crumpled up piece of blue tape or Red Bull can. I don't know what's, what that is. I'm sure one of the construction crew left it there. But um, never thought I was going to do this. Never thought I was going to become creative director, of course. 
I started by coming out there and painting some walls for some friends who were part of Fright Nights. They said, can you make that look rusty? Can you make that look like brick? And I was like, yeah, actually, I do that residential uh, for residential customers in the faux finish kind of realm. That turned into more fancier stuff like this. That turned into me getting one of the haunted houses out of three. And then that turned into eventually the creative director role. So it was that perfect, that perfect little um, start at the bottom as just a set designer and a scare actor and work my way up all the way to the top of the creative team. So that, that was just, can you do that? Yes. Can you do that? Yes. Uh, there's me and my lovely wife here. <laughs> That was our wedding picture. <laughs> what? It's not funny. Uh, this will be mostly artwork. I'm just going to kind of show you some stuff that's around town. This is on Georgia Avenue. This just happened, 2019. Uh, that's going to be an artist space over there, right under the southern flyover. So go visit that. That's only about one tenth of that mural. It's it's about 60 feet running, and then another 15 around the corner. That's a fun one. Uh, my weird brain. <laughs> Uh, this is for subculture, as a matter of fact, Rodney, Rodney Mayo. And uh, I've been working for and with Rodney for a while, and the beauty of him is he kind of is like, I don't know, one of your weird characters. And I'm like, I love you, dude. <laughs> uh, here's a painting. Also, this was also done for Rodney, and he gave me absolutely no artistic direction whatsoever. So I just went off the rails with weirdness. Um, this, I was lucky to have this in a recent uh, street art graffiti show here at the Cultural Council, that is a, that's acrylic on canvas, abstract to some degree, you can see stuff in there. So of course I'm gonna push you guys to my website. Uh, I have business cards in my pocket, there's business cards out there by the mural, which I hope if you didn't paint, you will paint on. Uh, Hullabaloo downtown, if you ever been on their back patio. Uh, yeah, there we go, tie into the Cultural Council. Uh, blessed to have this opportunity, again, I had no business saying yes to this, but since I'm so accustomed to saying yes, I had to. I was double booked at the time. Um, so what was good about that is it allowed me to hire another artist. I hired an artist friend of mine to help me out and pay, paid her fairly, which is part of my mission as an artist is to make sure that I'm spreading the wealth, whether it be through producing shows or working for mobile murals, by the way. Anyone wants to uh, talk about that after? I'll definitely hire you for a gig. It's not busy enough to have actual employees yet, but it's getting there. But yeah, I uh, hired a local friend of mine, Becky Osborne, who's also a muralist, to help me with this to get it done. So that's at Olive and Clematis. So go pay it a visit. Uh, it's not going to be up for long. Acrylic on canvas. I do uh, a lot of social commentary pieces. They're my favorite. This is not for someone. This is for me. It actually sold. I don't expect to sell these because they're so specific and it's not really living room art because most people don't necessarily want some kind of thought piece in their house. But um, I did find a client for this. He's actually purchased a few things. More social commentary. Poor, poor, poor Willy Wonka. That's an older one. That was actually painted right before, if you can believe it, the big crash of, what was that, 07? I don't remember. Great thing about being a freelance artist and having low overhead is the economy can go up and down and I'm just like, what? what's going on? <laughs> I'm still living like a, like a vagabond. What's the difference? <laughs> still have an 03 Honda. Doesn't matter. Um, more social commentary. A little grim. A little grim, but a little true. Um, I'm creating a solo show based around these. These are, they are political in nature, but it's, not, it's neither for nor against. It's not left or right, it's wrong and right. So I meet a lot of people from different spectrums on, on the political scale, and there's really not much to argue about with this, no matter if you're far right or far left. Uh, this is at Respectables, so if you've ever been inside, you'll, you'll know that there are, this is a detail shop though, Projections on top of this, which is one of my favorite things to do. If you've been to Brewhouse Gallery, there's another one there, a robot mural with projections on top. Uh, it kind of brings it to life. Everything kind of moves. The wings kind of flutter. The, sky, the clouds move. <coughs> Pretty insane. More abstract. So I'm available for commission. Ta-da! If anyone's like, ooh, I would love that over my couch. <laughs> and I would say, not, not that that. <laughs> don't, don't put that over your couch. Uh, this is coming out of my, my uh, comfort zone. Um, I had a, a mentor and a, 
he's considerably younger than me too, and he's a phenomenal um, 3D artist. Uh, Woody, Woody Othello, used to be at the Armory, now he's out west. And uh, I was just felt stagnant in 2D, and I was like, I gotta do something, I gotta shake it up. So I went to Armory, took a class, got my butt kicked. It came out good though. But yeah, it's good to get your ass handed to you every once in a while. So again, back to that place of yes, you're used to doing this and you're comfortable doing this and you're getting results. And it really, honestly, you know it's a plateau. That's why it's comfortable. So get out of it. Get out of it. Um, you got to travel too, right? That's, these are in here because of the theme wonder. I mean, to gain another perspective, here we are, Rainbow Mountains, and uh, we did a wedding ceremony as well. It's Machu Picchu, top of the world. Um, so if you can, get around and uh, give yourself new perspective. I think it's very important. This is an obvious statement, but... Do it. Uh, here you go. Wonder is a complex emotion involving elements of surprise, curiosity, contemplation, and joy. It's perhaps best defined as a heightened state of consciousness. That's my favorite part of that. Best defined as a heightened state of consciousness. Because if, if you can work that, it sounds like hippy-dippy, right? You gotta have some crystals like taped to your forehead and have some incense burning. No, if you can, if you can work this into your everyday work day, um, isn't your work gonna be at, at this other level? And no matter what it is you're doing, selling, creating, um, is going to be more appealing because it's going to have that, that feeling around it.